All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. We've got the latest FSD update, version 12.3.6. Now, we've already made the video of our first impressions of that, but we also, with this update, have gotten updates to Auto Park as well as the addition of Tesla Vision Park Assist. Two separate features, maybe conflated with one another. I want to try to clarify them here. So great updates here. We're going to test them out, take them for a spin, see what they look like in action. Uh, but before we do that, let's, let's, let's set some ground rules and understanding of what it is. So first and foremost, Tesla has the concept of auto park, right? Driving at slow speeds, you want the car to park itself. It's had this for many, many years, right? Many, many years it's had this, this capability, whether it's with hardware one, hardware two, three, whatever. It's always had that. And this continues to, to build upon that by giving you a new way to interface with it. Prior to this update, what you would do is you would drive along the parking lot and you would basically find a spot and you would press the button on the screen to initiate auto park. This changes that by allowing you to select spots based on the visual 3D representation on your instrument panel using the scroll wheel and then select the spot and then that allows you to park. So that, that has that. And if you have uh, any Tesla car, you're gonna have this capability to be able to do that. What they've also added is now a rare feature for Tesla to give uh, users the option of toggling something on or off versus just forcing it to just go, you know, with that particular option or whatever option they deem is more valuable or useful. Uh, so now you have the ability to have Tesla Vision Park Assist. This is their vision only Park Assist system, allowing you to be able to surveil the 3D surroundings around you to be able to assess how far, where objects are. And it's basically mm -hmm. Tesla's answer to the 3D camera view that most cars have, most people have been asking about. So it helps you park by being able to visualize your surrounding environment. So these two things work in tandem and it's again, unique for Tesla to give you the option. So now if we want to check the hardware version that you have to be able to determine whether you've got this feature or not. So if you have an Intel Atom based computer, some of the older Model 3 and Model Ys have those, uh, Model S's and Model X's have them as well. Uh, but if you have an Intel based processor, you're only going to get the updates to auto park. You're not going to get the Tesla Vision Assist. You'll be able to see that when you go to additional vehicle information and look at the infotainment processor. If it says Intel Atom, you're not going to get the, the Tesla Vision Park Assist. You're just going to get the updates to the auto park capabilities. If you have the AMD Ryzen computer, which is the latest and greatest for Tesla, you're going to be able to get this Tesla Vision Assist. All right. So that's where you're going to be able to do that. And then from this menu, you're then going to be able to go in here and see the option, which again is very unique for Tesla to do giving options to turn something on and off versus again, just forcing you one way or the other. So right now you have the option of standard, which is ultrasonic sensors, uh, being the standard method from which you visualize and utilize auto park versus Tesla vision, which is going to use vision only. Okay. So standard is going to give you the readouts of the distance between objects, meaning 25 inches, 30, 30 inches, eight inches, etc. And then Tesla vision is not going to give you any measurements. It's going to show you with the heat map, and the 3D fidelity view of that. Now, because this is an S and X car, excuse me, this is a Model S car, uh, I cannot rotate the visuals. I can't rotate the visuals at all. If they were to allow an extension of the, of, the, of the display to come here, then I can rotate it. But let's take it out for a spin. Let's test it out, see how it works in practice. We'll start with standard and go from there. All right, so first and foremost, now that we're going slow, the visualization now changes to show actual parking signs and parking, uh, parking spots, I should say, in here. I'll choose this one here. I'll pass a little bit more. And now you use the scroll wheel to select the slot you want, right? Instead of, a if you have the Model 3 or Model Y, you're gonna use a touch screen and press it here. Model S and X will use the scroll wheel and you'll press it and you'll press the button and it'll now perform the auto park maneuver. This is standard. I can't move the screen around. The visualization is only on the instrument panel for now not extended to the uh, touch screen for now. Maybe they can change that in the future. And we are going to complete this maneuver with only seeing the visualization that you see on the instrument panel. And I can't move it. Pretty good. Auto Park has always been rock solid with the ultrasonic sensors. Never really had a real issue with it. Not, the only issue I had with it, I should say, is speed. It doesn't do things very fast and sort of jams people up. Okay. So that was cool. I'm parked. Uh, as you can see here in the cameras, 
good distance between the, 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 the lines, but more importantly, it's good distance between the cars. It centers itself based on the cars when there's cars present. It centers itself based on the lines when there's no cars present and there's just the lines. So that was pretty cool. Interfaces here, use the scroll wheel. Now let's switch up and go to Vision Assist. My Tesla Vision Assist. Let's try it now. Put it back in gear. Now I get a little bit of a different visualization here with the uh, the indicators being more orange and red, sort of like the uh, arcs of the ultrasonic sensors. And I'm actually going to go to that same spot to see if it's any different. So I'm going to go around here. Same visualization here on the screen. No different. But the difference here is going to be the uh, the visualization. So I don't think fundamentally the parking capability changes just how it's visualized, I think. But allegedly it's supposed to be more precise in certain instances than the ultrasonic sensors. But if you don't have ultrasonic sensors, then it's something rather than nothing. If you have ultrasonic sensors, it's an, it's an addition and enhancement. All right. Parking spots come up. I think it was in this other one right here. Up a little bit, use my scroll wheel, press the button. Had to come to a stop before I press the button. Makes a different maneuver here. It goes forward a little bit. Maybe I wasn't exactly the same place, but let's see. Now it's going to start to reverse. Hmm. A little awkward. Maybe way more awkward than the, the original. And again, I don't know if I stopped at the exact same spot, so that might have been it. Might have been a little bit further away. But this is real world. This is how it is. Let's see what happens. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit closer to the line than the other one, but pretty good nonetheless. Uh, shows me the visualization, shows me uh, what it looks like uh, on the uh, on the instrument panel, and that happens for parallel and perpendicular parking. Let's try another spot with uh, with just the lines and no cars. I'll go around really quickly. I'll go a little faster here, staying within the limit of a parking lot. Kids and families are here. I'll be cautious. All right, and I'll just go right around here and go for a spot that does that has just the lines. And again, as you look at the visualization here, you'll start to see everything being visualized. It doesn't accommodate for handicap parking in this situation where it may show or, or may recognize the handicap parking signs, but it doesn't say that that's not a, park, a space that you can park in. So I'll come on this side here. Now I'm gonna abundance of parking spots here now I'm going to show you how the scroll wheel works. I'm scrolling here. I can scroll through all the different ones. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Left, left, left. I can't go left and right, but I can just keep scrolling until it goes to the next row. I'll choose this one and go. So I think in this instance, um, it seems scroll is a little bit more efficient just because you know you'll get that tactile click to know you selected the right spot. Versus the touch screen, if you're in a hurry, you might tap it and it might not register that touch. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Again, a little more biased towards this right line than the left, not perfectly centered, but good enough, gets the job done. Uh, in my book, doesn't really need to be all the way there. It just needs to be uh, sufficient enough for being in the lines and being compliant. But more important, I think the speed needs to improve as well. Okay, so I'm going to try now switching back over to the classic, or the standard, and seeing if there's a difference there. And instead of going all the way around, I'm just going to back up here. Back up. Now I can still choose that spot just to show you a real world example. Right? Here's the top down view if I'm in reverse, but if I'm going for straight, I can choose the top down view. I'll choose that one. See what it does for me. Again, still very slow. 
and slow meaning that obviously people can park faster than this and people will probably expect you to park faster than this or at least make less maneuvers if necessary or when necessary. So could I have gotten that in one shot? Maybe, maybe not. And I know humans mess up too, but I'm just saying in terms of the people reacting to you parking, people walking through the lot, people par- pulling out of their spot, trying to get through, things like that. All right, here we go. A little bias to that side. So again, in the lines, not perfect, either one. Um, I'm not really seeing the difference. It kind of seems like for this one, visually, it seems the exact same. Um, the difference could just be the fact that one is using vision, one is using ultrasonic sensors for now. And maybe that difference will be increased and the contrast will be increased over time when they refine vision to make it even better, more precise. But right now it seems very much the same. And even to the fact that I'm not even getting, if I go to our object, I'm not even really getting the ultrasonic sensor. Let me go by this car really quickly and see if I can get the ultrasonics to wake up. There we go. I get the arcs right there. They're waking up. Okay, 27 inches, 25 inches. Good. And back up here. Visualization seems the same. No difference. It's not giving me the ability to park when I'm in a parking spot, so I can't like switch spaces on a scroll and none of that. But I'm gonna park here for a second, jump into, so look at this person parking, see? They're pulling up, moving at similar speeds, maybe a little faster than the car is doing. And that's what people expect when they see people parking. The lady has her door open, if you guys can't see that one, but they're parking pretty good. I'm gonna switch to Tesla, Tesla Vision. Uh, and now I'm going to go straight and now see if if the ultrasonic sensors are truly turned off. I'm just gonna go up here. I'm not gonna hit this car. I just wanna get close enough for it to engage to see what happens. People are looking at me like I'm crazy. All right, so see that? Just the visual, no, uh, no measurement of distance. And that's kind of what the release note said, no measurement of distance. So it doesn't tell you how close or how far it is from something. It just shows you what the visual indication. Again, for those cars that don't have ultrasonic sensors. I don't really know why they took ultrasonic sensors out outside of costs. Um, whether they are relevant for FSD or not, they definitely are relevant and helpful for parking. So I'm not quite sure. But I'll go back around again. Vision only right now. It's getting hot out here. I'm looking for parking. Now I'm slowing down below five miles an hour in the, in the parking lot. Parking spots. I keep saying parking lot comes up so now i can choose uh let me try to choose one that's ahead of me and see what happens i'll choose this one that's a little bit ahead of me does it park head in no it only parks in reverse so it'll drive past the spot that you choose if it's ahead of you and then back in Let's see what happens here good angle should get this in one move Pretty straightforward. One move. Come on, guys. Nice. Good. And again, um, it's not centering for the lines when there's cars present. It's centering for the distance between the two cars. And that's the way autopilot, ultrasonic sensors or not, has always worked. So... Auto park is the auto parking capability. This is an update to auto park where you can select using the scroll wheel. Tesla Vision Assist gives you the 3D representation so you can move the screen around if you have a Model 3 or Model Y. Not really impactful for Model S or Model X, but it allows you to choose between vision or ultrasonic sensors. And again, I think that's really boating towards future functionality versus current functionality because right now they're, um, they're kind of at parity with ultrasonic sensors being a little bit more precise at times depending on what the obstacles are. And if I can't move the visualization on the S and X, it doesn't have as much value as it does. So I think this is their answer to the 3D surround view that most cars have and people have been asking about to be able to see your surroundings. But more importantly, it's to help people parking with, uh, without ultrasonic sensors, uh, which seems a little bit cumbersome to try to park and then move the screen to visualize where you need it to be. Um, 
I don't really see the value in that. I think that's that, that makes it a little bit harder. Just park. And if you can't park, use the park assist or use the auto park functionality. But don't try to park and then use the screen to swivel around and see where things are. All right. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about this update? What do you think about the updates to auto park uh, versus what you think about the updates to vision assist? And does that work for you if you have a Model 3 or Model Y? Does it work for you if you have a Model S or X? Is it valuable to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.